Afde Guam, hello, I'm Jason Salas. I'm coming to you live this afternoon on a Friday from the Office of Civil Defense and Guam Homeland Security in Aganya Heights, three levels down because for the first time in quite a while, we are actually having a heavy weather briefing where many of the island's response activity coordinators uh, have gathered here um, to discuss the weather situation that is expected over the next few days. Um, if you haven't apprised yourself of what is going on out uh, within the region, about 600 miles, 610 give or take, to the south-southeast of our island, uh, there is a weather system right now being classified as a tropical disturbance that is forming right now. Of course, we are heading into the weekend. Um, it is expected to bring um, more wet conditions than windy, um, or windy than wet, but we will hear from the, uh, the weather experts on that topic as we take you uh, with us. So I am here with my colleagues in Guam Media. Of course, uh, Jenica Mindy Blas leading the way as we take you into, uh, which is, if you've watched Guam News for several years, a very familiar venue as we are going into um, the Emergency Operations Center here. Once again, we are coming to you live from Aganya Heights. Scoot over just a little bit for our okay, so hi everybody. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. So, many of most of the island's uh, municipal leaders are here mayors, vice mayors, as well as the heads of the safety agencies. Um, so, sit back, everybody. Just uh, before that, begin this brief. Housekeeping rules, uh, please turn up your cell phones. Um, if you sign in upstairs and you left your email address, you'll get a copy of the slides. So you do not need to take pictures and try and flex over the partitions, all right? Um, so please, as Jenna mentioned earlier, hold your questions till later. Um, and then we'll begin. All right, so good afternoon, everybody. It's been a while since we met in here for a weather-related reason. So it kind of brings back old memories for pre-COVID conditions. Uh, unfortunately, we are here to discuss some weather concerns and we're gonna get right into the details. And so you may be familiar with recent communications from social media at the National Weather Service. Uh, this is tropical disturbance in West Area 97W. Uh, we've been watching this for a little while in the Micronesia states of Yap and Chuk. Uh, this thing is starting to spin up gradually just west of Chuuk Lagoon. Uh, a tropical cyclone formation alert has been issued this morning by the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. That means that significant development into a tropical depression is likely within 24 hours. So we're within that 24 hour time frame. Earlier today it was centered near 5 North 148 East, moving slowly westward at about four to five miles per hour. That was about 600 miles south southeast of Guam. Uh, there's been little notable motions for the last uh, 12 to 36 hours. That's because it's been a very ill-defined uh, low-level circulation center. Uh, that's kept this system relatively disorganized, uh, but things are starting to come together. Earlier today, we had sustained winds around 25 miles per hour with gusts upwards of 30 to 35 miles with the system. And so this is the latest uh, Joint Typhoon Warning Center plot uh, showing 97W. Again, it's rated high for tropical cyclone development, and that means that it could become a tropical depression within the next 24 hours. Um, and so this is gonna be a concern for us moving forward into the weekend and early next week um, for a number of reasons. Specifically, this system is expected to make a, a turn toward the north-northwest uh, once it gets its low-level circulation center together uh, for a number of reasons. We'll go into those details shortly, but again, uh, Chuk Lagoon in this area, Guam is up there on the far uh, upper left side of the screen. It's been drifting slowly westward, but is expected to make a sharp turn toward the north, northwest in the coming days. This is a graphic we released this morning with the email alert and also on social media showing the bigger picture with Chuk, uh, the tropical disturbance here, and then Guam and the CNMI farther to the north. Uh, this is our forecast plot where it's generally expected to um, push upwards. This is Guam right in this area, Guam and the CMI. And again, we're gonna see that northwestward motion in the next uh, probably 12 to 36 hours, which will put it near or very close to Guam and the CMI probably early next week. 
And so again, it's a very disorganized system. Guam and CNMI right up here to the north. This is the broad disturbance. So it's a very disorganized system. It's still trying to get its act together. Uh, its development has been mitigated due to uh, a moderately favorable atmospheric environment. Those conditions are gradually improving as a low level uh, surface winds are starting to wrap around into a more of a dominant low level circulation center. Once that dominant circulation gets established, that's where we're gonna start seeing things move along with this disturbance. So why are we here this afternoon? This is why we're here. So this is a disturbance earlier this morning. This is a single uh, forecast model showing a range of plots based on different parameters being uh, adjusted a little bit, all making a beeline toward Guam and the CNMI. These colors represent storm intensity. There is some indication for rapid intensification once that low level circulation center becomes better defined as it approaches Guam and the CNMI. We've seen this trend and several forecast models over the last two to three days that does make it a concerning situation for us in Guam and the CNMI. Can it miss Guam next week? Yes. Can we deal with a direct hit next week? Absolutely yes. We're right there in the crosshairs. And so this thing is something that we're gonna to have to take very seriously over the next two to three days through the weekend. So again, this is the bigger picture. We're watching a, a surface trough and a storm system come off of Japan that's gonna be sweeping across the North Pacific. We have the subtropical ridge to the north that's gonna keep this thing suppressed to the south. But once this ridge weakens, that's where we're gonna see that upward motion toward the north. Um, that's gonna be one of the factors triggering this turn toward the north with that lighter ridge axis farther the north. We're gonna be watching for that over the next 12 to 36 hours. Uh, this is the forecast model. We've seen a variety of plots over the last couple of days, all favoring a track toward Guam and the CMI. So this trend has been holding pretty steady for a couple of days, and we're gonna be looking at a passage definitely within the Mariana Islands, whether it's to the west of Guam, to the east of Saipan, or directly through the islands. When will this pass? Sometime between Monday and Wednesday. And so this is some information for Chuuk and Yap State. We discussed this with the, the compact states this morning. Uh, for us here in Guam, the CNMI, our time frame, we're looking at roughly Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday for a passage closest to the Mariana Islands. Uh, the potential for tropical storms, typhoon impacts, yeah, they're definitely there. We can see a range of winds from damaging 39 mile per hour sustained winds to destructive winds, maybe even to category one typhoon force conditions. We're gonna be watching for that trend. A lot of it hinges on when that low level circulation actually gets better established and starts to take shape over the next 12 to 36 hours. The overnight guidance last night said we had about a 30 to 40% chance of winds upwards of around 30 to 35 miles per hour for next week. Uh, and about a 20% a chance of winds of 45 miles per hour early next week. We're gonna see these numbers change every six hours with the next forecast model cycle. Every six hours, we have the latest guidance from the numerical forecast models. This is why we're seeing these things change. So keep that in mind. The current <coughs> forecast right now does not mean that's what's gonna happen Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. We keep analyzing the data and putting the best available forecast out. Sea conditions. Uh, worst case scenario, we're going to see uh, seas and surf rapidly increase across the region, especially with the nearby passage of a tropical cyclone. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty, so keep this in mind. Time is on our side. It's the weekend. We have beautiful weather for Saturday and Sunday. If we're looking at a storm passage, this weekend is when you need to be taking those actions, thinking through the processes, uh, the agencies, your offices, your businesses. What actions do you need to take to prepare for a storm? Whether it's a tropical depression, a tropical storm, or a typhoon. So the uncertainty is there. Uh, we'll get a better feel for things, especially in the next uh, 12 to 36 hours again, once that low level circulation starts to become better established. Once that happens, models will start coming into better synchronization. We'll have a better timeline of events, and we'll have a better feel uh, definitely by Saturday afternoon and Sunday morning, what's gonna happen and when. The model guidance currently pushes this thing north-northwestward with a passage ranging from just west to just uh, west of Guam to just east of the Marianas. Um, 
with the potential for rapidly developing system. As a forecaster, this is my biggest fear, rapid intensification. So we have to keep that in mind. If this happens, we could be dealing with something significantly more than a tropical storm force system Monday and Tuesday. And so the certainty, that will increase when the circulation becomes well-defined and the northerly motion has begun, possibly tonight or Saturday. Regarding our watches and warnings, there are currently no watches, warnings, advisories in effect for Guam or the CNMI. Uh, we issue tropical cyclone watches. That's when 39 mile per hour sustained winds are possible within 48 hours. So that means tropical storm force conditions are possible within two days. If it becomes necessary, we will upgrade that watch to a warning, which means tropical storm force conditions are expected within one day. And so that's based on the certainty. Right now, we do not have any watches or warnings in effect. Uh, it's still too early for that. We're still piecing together this picture, gathering the information, and seeing how forecast tracks adjust over the next couple of days. Time is on our side at this point. Uh, but because of those plots that we're seeing, that's why we have to take this seriously. That's why we have to meet in here because it is the weekend. We want to get this in our minds in case we have to start taking more formal action uh, in the coming days. Uh, finally, uh, join us live on Facebook at National Weather Service Guam. We will be going live from our operations area at 5.30 p.m. this afternoon. We'll be going into the operations and talking with the forecasters, seeing what the trends are for Guam, the CNMI timeline, the latest on this tropical cyclone development and where we can expect things to be through the weekend. So I think that's the end of this presentation. I'm gonna hand it over to Jenna. I think media will be egressing and then we'll take questions in here. Okay, thank you so much. So our media partners can follow me. You're on, you're on. Yeah. Have a seat. Sorry, it's really yeah. informal. You can have a seat, please. Yeah. Um, come on in, come on in. We'll just stage in here for now. Okay. Okay, everybody. Um, Julian Hernandez, my colleague from the KUM newsroom, is joining me um, right now. So, Julian, really um, interesting information that Landon with the NWS presented. Um, he seemed generally concerned, as and he emphasized the fact that we as Guamanians should be too, uh, because the models indicate that uh, that this thing, regardless of intensity, definitely looks like it's going to head our way. Right, but he did say though that time is on our side and we have the whole weekend to prepare. We, you know, we have the clear weather and the sunny, you know, it's going to be, you know, expected for sunny weather right now, but then of course, we got to prepare and we got to take this seriously as you know, come Monday, it is expected to come in. Mm -hmm. Okay, and everybody, we want to uh, remind you, as Landon was saying, there is going to be another live stream on the National Weather Service Guam office on their page on Facebook. So please follow that because they're going to be posting all weekend any new information. And um, if you check out their pages, their website, they update four times a day. Remember, the numbers you need to know, 7171, 7 a.m., 1 p.m., 7 p.m., 1 a.m. And they update all their forecasts and movement uh, intensity. Uh, Julian, you got some uh, final thoughts about what people should do to prepare. Well, right now we do have the story coming up for prime time tonight, so we will give you the list of things that you need to prepare, and including talks with other members in the community and how they're preparing for the storm as well. All right. KUAM News, back to you.